Thank you. Trying to figure out why everybody that comes up here is saying, what took you so long, Ed? <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm not going to say that because I'm so happy to be here. Ed called me this spring. Y'all, Ed, you should call more often. I enjoyed our visit and gave me the good news, and it's really changed my life a lot. It's changed my family's life a lot. Can't believe the number of people here today. Happy to see it. Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey. <clears throat> Have a lot of Nebraska people here. One of them I have to introduce to you. Mom? <laughs> 91 year old mother. <laughs> who, who, believe me, is a saint. My, <clears throat> I have a brother here, Bob and Betty, my sister from Nebraska. I have my family here, my wife, Herbie, the daughters, Jeannie, Sue Ann and Karen, and their, their families, my two sons, Richard and John, and their wives. A lot of cousins, a lot of nieces, nephews from the great state of Nebraska. Came here over a hundred of them in force. And you, you Penn Staters should never forget we're number one. I don't know where... <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ideally, ideally for me, this could have happened earlier because uh, uh, my father's passed away. <clears throat> Hang on. My twin sister passed away, and <clears throat> we had a daughter. But the, on the other hand, our grandchildren are here. They wouldn't have been here 20 years ago. We have, we have nine of them. I think seven of them are here, all except the two little ones. So that's a nice thing that's happened, that they're here to be a part of this. Another great thing is <clears throat> I got to go in with Schmitty. Now, <clears throat> You don't plan something like this. You know, this, you can't orchestrate Mike, of course, going in on the first ballot. I went in 20-some years later. Nobody could ever plan anything like that. But, but it is a tremendous privilege to go in with Mike. It would have been a tremendous privilege to go in with Steve Carlton, who went in last year. And it's nice also that my old teammate, Robin Roberts, who is in, is here today. I saw, I saw Smitty play every game he played. I saw, I saw him from the get-go when his manager said, I'd trade Mike Schmidt for a load of pumpkins. Won't tell you who the manager was. <laughs> but, uh, Schmitty was always a great fielder right from the get-go. No problems with the glove. He had a little trouble early, you know, with the bat. But I saw him improve and work and develop every year until he became the great player that we saw for so many years. And, and Mike, it's a real treat to go in here with you today. I'm, I'm sincere about it. And I congratulate your mother and dad and Don and the field. <clears throat> 
It was a, it was a privilege to have seen Smitty and Steve Carlton, the, the two greatest I've seen in Philly's uniform. I can't believe, I can't believe this, this great turnout. I, I was just told by Ed here that it's the greatest crowd in the history of the Hall of Fame. <clears throat> Wish I could tell you that we had tasty cakes and <laughs> pretzels out there. But I think you're on your own in that department. But uh, it, it's, it's so wonderful to see this many people. Wonderful to see the greatest manager I ever played for, Eddie Sawyer, who's sitting back here. Stand up, Eddie, would you? I, there's Eddie. I started my professional career in Utica, New York, which is, you know, just up the road here. Started with Eddie Sawyer in the old Eastern League in 1945. And we had a hell of a ball club, Eddie. But every young player should have had the opportunity to start playing professional ball for a guy like Eddie Sawyer. I played for him in the minors and part of my major league career. A wonderful person. Who, who taught us so much and was so good to all of us young people who were involved with the Utica Blue Sox at that time. Eddie, it's really good to see you here. I want to thank the Carpenters. I see Ruley sitting over here, the Carpenter family, who did so much for me and my family. The Bill Giles group now, with all, all the owners here who came up here to see this, who did so much for us here. I want to thank these guys back here who have made me feel so comfortable. I really didn't feel that comfortable coming up here. It's no secret. Uh, they didn't exactly carry me in here in a sedan chair with blazing or blaring trumpets. So I was a little shaky about joining this select group. And they have really been nice to all of us here, and I appreciate it. Some of you guys, <laughs> some of you guys I played against, and uh, I know why you're here. I'm not always sure why I'm here. I would have been here earlier if it wouldn't have been for some of these guys sitting behind me. They always said, uh, they always said, uh, the thing that's kept you out of here is Mickey, Willie, and the Duke. Well. I don't know about that. There, there are some other ball players that I think have been overlooked. I'm not a crusader, but I would mention, uh, I think Ronnie Sano was overlooked because of uh, Ernie Banks. I think Veda Pinson was overlooked because of Frank Robinson. Some great ball players. I think Jim Bunning and, and uh, Nellie Fox someday will go in there anyway. Aren't in yet, but I think they will. Nellie Fox, one of my dear and good friends. I'd like to see that happen to him one of these days. Somebody ought to check the record of our good friend Rusty Staub. I mean, there's some great, great players out there. Well, I'm not going to get into that. That's, not, that's really not any of my business. I guess I already did. But that's not up to me. But, but there were some beautiful ball players who I think should probably be sitting up here uh, someday. <laughs> no. That will be covered, I can guarantee you. <laughs> but, but, but not by me. I'll let the person who should mention something like that talk about it, but, it, but it's not me, and, and you will hear about it, I'm sure. I'll tell you, the, 
the greatest part about this day are the fans. I mean, re really, I mean, this is, this is awesome. This is awesome. And you know, I hope that baseball will pay attention a little bit to what has happened here today. I think there's a message here. I mean, we hear so many things about what's wrong with baseball. You people aren't here because they're having fireworks tonight. You're not here because they gave something away. Really not here to see a ball game. You're here for the baseball game. And I think that's a message that you send that maybe we ought to get some things straightened out. You know, we're all in this together. I'm talking about the baseball owners, the baseball players, the guys like us who are the veterans. We're in it together. We're in it together with the fans. Listen to the fans. I mean, let's don't have, let's don't have, let's get this mess straightened out. We're sitting here, we're sitting here without an agreement. We're sitting out here without a baseball commissioner. I can't believe this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to close. I just want to close by quoting Casey Stingle, who I played for in the 1962 Mets. It's his birthday today, believe it or not. I think he was born in 1892, but it's Casey Stingle's birthday. The last game of the 1962 New York Mets the worst team ever put together in the history of baseball. I was the most viable player on that team, I want you to know. We're playing the Chicago Cubs in Chicago. We're down by one run. We get a run, uh, Sammy Drake leads off with a single. I, I followed with a single, my last major league hit because I retired after that season. First and second, nobody out. Joe Pignatano, hit what appeared to be a sure base hit, a little semi-line drive in shallow right center field. Sammy Drake takes off from second. I take off from first. Kenny Hubbs, who, who died a year later in a plane crash, great fielder, ran back on the dead run. He caught the ball in the web and his glove. He turned over about six times, held on to the ball, threw it to second, second, second out, back to first triple play. Ended our season, our 120th loss a major league record. As we walked into the visitor's clubhouse, Casey Stingle was standing there, and he said to us, he said, fellers, he says, I don't want anybody to feel bad about this. He said, this has been a real team effort. He said, no one or two people could have done all this. Well, that, that's what I, I'm going to quote, Stacey. No, no one or two people could have done all this, and everybody that had a part of it, God bless them, especially the fans. You have made this the greatest day of my life.